Well, hey, welcome to the BGX podcast. Today, I've got him with me. His name is George, and he plays Magic. Uh, welcome, <laughs> George. How are you doing today? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. How are you, man? Awesome. I am doing so well. Thanks so much for uh, for coming on. Um, so start us off. If, if somebody doesn't know you, just kind of tell us a little bit about uh, about yourself. Yeah, well, hi. My name is George, and I play Magic. Um, that's kind of my whole shtick here. Um, I make TikTok videos. Um, I have about a thousand followers and we just like talking about magic all the time. Uh, personally, I am a boarding school teacher up here in North Carolina, work with children with like learning differences and stuff like that. That's about it. I spend a lot of my free time playing magic, going outdoors, just having a ball. Awesome. Well, so they don't let just anybody walk in off the street and teach uh, boarding school. So tell me about, you know, how did you get into that? How'd you become a teacher? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I initially went into college wanting to be an engineer. And after a month of calculus, realized that was not for me. So I transitioned over to the education side of it and then realized that the normal education setting wasn't for me. So I actually majored in outdoor education and worked over in California at an outdoor science school for a year. And then COVID hit and all of that kind of stuff. So just looking for jobs, found a cool place up in North Carolina where the kids go on and off campus for every other week. So two weeks on campus, two weeks out somewhere in the United States going camping and doing outdoor education and stuff like that. So it just seemed like a perfect fit for me. And I've been working here for almost two years now and have absolutely loved it. And, and what age range are you teaching there? Yeah. So our youngest is 13 and our oldest is 19. So okay. just all throughout high school, you know, all of our, all of our kids are great. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Fun ages. So I, I've seen from some of your TikToks that your kids are into magic. So, yes, uh, you know, kind of tell me about how do you, how do you kind of merge those two of the professional, like I got to be a teacher, but also my name's George and I play magic. How do you kind of <laughs> blend those together? Yeah, absolutely. So my favorite way to play magic is a hundred card format called commander. So I have about 20 decks that I keep on hand. <laughs> So I have like a backpack full of decks. I have, the kids call it my briefcase. It is like a Lowe's like a uh, tool compartment thing yeah. um, that I can just throw decks in. So I just roll up to school and then after classes, after homework and everything, like George, magic? And I'm like, yes, I'm never gonna say no to a game of magic. Right. So we pull it all out. We play some games. Uh, we also play Dungeons and Dragons mm -hmm. together. So I'm the resident dungeon master for the school as well. Okay, awesome. T tell me a little bit about that. What are what are some of your uh, favorite moments from campaigns with uh, with your kids? Oh my goodness! So, <laughs> knowing my kids liking magic and liking Dungeons and Dragons, they asked me to run them through Ravnica, uh, which is the magic setting in the D and D uh, the D and D books. So they're fighting like the first boss, which is also a magic card. So. <laughs> It's a uh, Krinko. He is a mm -hmm. goblin mob boss kind of guy. So they finally beat Krinko. It was like a whole espionage mission and like a really grueling fight and everything. And then we go to play Magic that next day, and I play my Krinko deck just to kind of rub it in their faces a little bit. <laughs> and they're like, "George, how dare you do this to us?" Uh, so yeah, that's that's always awesome. fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. So. so um... How did you get started with magic? I mean, I, I've seen your videos. You are clearly an expert in this field. Uh, I mean, you know, what, what's kind of your journey been getting into magic? Yeah, so I was working at a summer camp in 2015. Um, I grew up in the Boy Scouts. So as soon as I graduated, I went into like working with the Boy Scouts over the summer. So I was working, uh, this is when Theros came out. Uh, and one of my buddies who I was working with was playing this card game like, what is this? I have no idea what this is. I played like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh when I was younger, but had fallen out of that. He's like, come here, let me show you. And it was the coolest thing I had ever seen in my life. It was just so complex. And you got to see these really cool, big, dumb monsters fighting each other. And I just fell in love with it. Uh, so then going forward, like throughout college, I'm like, well, I don't have hundreds of dollars to just blow on magic cards. So in 2019-ish, I... Actually, you know what? I'm getting back into it. I have like the the funds, let's say, to like buy my first deck and everything. And then it just snowballed from there. <laughs> just 
absolutely in love with it and just any new thing that I want I like hey that sounds like a cool deck I can put that together now and I have people to play with I have a really awesome magic scene at my local game store so I go there once or twice a week to play magic yeah it's it's been a journey and I love it yeah so speaking of you know obviously cards uh can get expensive you know if you're recommending to a new player who's sort of just getting into the hobby where do you recommend they start? I mean, you know, I go on Facebook Marketplace and they have like a thousand magic cards for $50. Like, is that yeah. where I start or do I go buy a starter deck? Like what's the right way to get into magic, I guess? Yeah, I 100% recommend just going to like the local game store in your area because if you're wanting to get into magic, that's probably where you're going to play the most often. So just going in there, seeing what everyone's playing. Are they playing modern, commander, standard, just pile of cards on the table? just whatever they're playing and then just ask like most of the employees and most of the people they're playing want more people to come play for one reason or another so they're more than happy to get you started and there's some really awesome you know budget decks you know magic like wizards of the coast themselves sell pre-constructed decks ranging from 20 to 50 dollars normally uh so that's just a really easy starting point to hop into the hobby um and then just everyone around you just talk to them like I have spare decks that I bring with me to lend out to people specifically right. to just have them play with me. Like, hey, fifty dollars is a lot of money. You know, that's a week of groceries for you know poor college kid. So just blowing that on some cardboard is crazy. So like, hey, let's just try it out first. See if this is something you're gonna like. And then if you do like it, we can talk about like you know buying your first deck or like just seeing what kind of play style you like, stuff like that. So just having conversations with people. You know, local game stores are the best place to get started. Yeah, absolutely. You know, local game stores are, are in my opinion, they're booming right now. I mean, they're taking absolutely. off. You see them popping up everywhere. You know, as a Magic player and, and a Magic enthusiast and, and also D&D, like, what are some of the things that you wish more local game stores would do or oh, they would man. do better? Like, what, what's, what's that thing, you, that advice you could give to game store owners out there? That's a really good question. Honestly, all the ones I frequent do it really, really well. Uh, My one criticism of a lot of them is that their online presence is not, you know, fantastic. You know, you can go to a website and it looks like it's from the 90s. Right, right. I want to know what games you have in stock. I want to know what cards you have in stock. So that would be my advice. Like, give me me a little bit more information before I, you know, drive 30 minutes or an hour to come visit. Right. Okay. Well, so I guess I could have flipped the question the other way. What, what do you think that they are doing really well? Like, what is your favorite part about, you know, about your local game store other than just, you know, you get to go play magic. Exactly. Um, I think it's just the community that comes around it. Um, I am lucky to live in an area with three game stores within 30 minutes of me. So I can go to one frequent that every Thursday to play magic. And then I'll go to one on a Friday or a Saturday. And the same people from the original one are there at this one. They're like, oh, hey, George, what's mm-hmm. up, man? I haven't seen you here before. So just the the community aspect for me and the game store is really incentivized that, which I really enjoy. Like they want this community of people because, you know, on a foundation level, hey, that means they're going to come back and spend more money. But it's also just more fun for everybody. Right. And just just the community aspect. I, I have not been to a game store that doesn't care about the community. So that is like the best thing that they're doing right now. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, that's uh, that's one of the parts of that local game store feel. It's like, you know, everybody kind of knows your name. So yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, so tell me about, you know, uh, there's, there's all kinds of play styles, all kinds of different decks out there. How do you recommend somebody goes about choosing what play style they should play with or what kind of deck they should go mono white, you know, all the, all the options that are out there. How do you, how do you get into figuring out what your particular play style is? Yeah. So that came with just a bunch of play experience. My very first pack of magic I ever opened had a legendary God that was green and red. And that just, kind of snowballed into my love of those two colors now because that was the first pack I ever opened the first deck I really built and put money into Mm -hmm. and I just like 
big monsters fighting on battlefield like I'm big fantasy nerd so like that visual in my head is amazing but then other people really like you know the control aspect of the game like the resource management and like oh they're about to cast the spell that's going to win the game so I want to stop that because I also want to win the game so I personally lean towards like you know the more big dumb stompy monsters and like uh, they're called tribes in magic like the creature types so like more tribal decks so, like everything is a dinosaur everything is a sliver everything is something like this or that <coughs> excuse me that's what I lean into more but other people have whatever they want so just playing with a different deck um, most of my decks are completely different from one another just so I can you know lend them out to people and allow them to play like I have stuff all the way from $25 pile of cards to super competitive like I've won tournaments with it before so just try to find out what you like to play the power level you like to play and if you like multiple things get multiple decks mm -hmm. uh, so George um, maybe a tough question here but if you had to pick one card one magic card as your all-time favorite I mean what would that card be that is a tough one and it changes from month to month. That's sure. like asking me my favorite kid, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but right now, it is kind of going off of my dinosaurs and being big and dumb. There is a dinosaur called, called, called Quartzwood Crasher that whenever it attacks an opponent and deals damage, you get to make another dinosaur with that same ability. So just as the game goes on, you're just amassing more and more dinosaurs that can, like, trample over and... It's in that, you know, the green and red deck that I first started with. Um, and yeah, that, that's probably my favorite one right now. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So are, is that kind of more your play style is sort of the trample and uh, get yeah. a lot of monsters out there? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It's so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, if, if you were able to talk to the designers of Magic and, and ask them for one one thing like make one wish and they would grant it what would yeah. that one wish be for you it's very specific um but i did a video on this recently i want whales in magic my favorite animal here in the real world is a whale because i just think they're huge majestic and awesome and there's like 12 whales in the 25 years of magic history 12 so i want like a legendary whale that does something crazy that that'd be like my one shot I'm like hey this is what i want please please give it to me <laughs> nice okay awesome um so let's talk conventions a little bit um you know what, what have you been to any conventions lately or you know what are some that you're looking forward to coming up yeah um not recently uh because of you know the whole yeah. pandemic thing but uh, throughout college, I was introduced to Dragon Con in mm -hmm. Atlanta. Uh, it's just a huge nerd convention, like pop culture, everything. Uh, so I did that every single year. I had my friends help me make like cosplays and stuff because, um, you know, that's part of the fun. And just going around and just seeing everybody being themselves and having a good time while they're wearing a full suit of armor <laughs> or yeah. you know it's it's great like i walk past the magic section of the convention and see somebody like full like amazing intricate costume and someone in a t-shirt and jeans right uh but yeah dragon con is the one i'm most excited to go back to uh in september yeah. so i i'm making plans to go back I'm, I've been missing it for the past few years. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait. Um, that's that's a definitely a good one. There's Dice Tower East is coming right here, like 20 minutes from me uh, in July. Oh no way! Yeah, and I can't wait to get over there and. That's um, super exciting. Participate. Yeah, man. Um, so if you had some advice, obviously, you know, you've had some success on TikTok. Your TikTok's growing very quickly. Yeah. If you had advice to somebody out there who loves magic, wants to get into making content and sort of taking this more seriously as not yeah. just a hobby, but also, you know, trying to get a, a little bit more serious about it. What would your advice be to those, uh, to those folks out there? My advice is, I, and you've probably heard this a thousand times, just do it, right? My first TikTok was me in my grandmother's spare room like hey you know what I just want to talk about magic this seems like a pretty cool way to do it 
and then yeah it just kind of was a roller coaster from there uh met a lot of really awesome people everyone on the mtg tiktok community is really warm and welcoming because you're all there for the same reason right you're all there to talk about magic to talk and have fun and just make jokes with each other so just make your presence known and you can't do that unless you make a video right like i think i got a hundred followers in my first month or so right it's slow growing but those people are going to talk about you right like hey this guy he's he's pretty funny he's talking about magic in a way i haven't seen before or making really funny jokes or being like actually serious and talking about like a competitive mindset like whatever your niche mm -hmm. is you want in magic go for it i found it really fun to do 15 seconds of a deck tech mm -hmm. so 15 seconds is like the shortest you can make a tiktok video so i just like speed run through what a deck is how it plays and all that stuff and people loved it i thought it would just be a funny joke like ah oh, this is gonna be for me see how fast i can talk but people liked it mm -hmm. right and i had no idea that they would and you don't know if people are gonna like your stuff until you do it right yeah. and just all the people everyone are going to care about you because you're part of their community because you you like the same stuff they do right i'm like oh hey this is a cool video i'm going to send it to my friend and that friend's going to send it to someone else and all mm. that social media stuff right you can't expect what's going to happen you just got to go for it so that's my advice yeah I, c I couldn't agree more you know one of the things that i always tell people if they're like oh i want to get in i want to start making tiktoks but i haven't started it's like first of all you just got to start i mean you're, yeah. you're absolutely right just put out your first video mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if it's horrible everyone's mm -hmm. first video is horrible all right so, exactly exactly um, you know and then really for me it's just be honest just just tell mm -hmm. your truth whatever the thing is that you really believe or you really like yeah. or whatever the thing is just be honest about it and and don't try to make videos that you think people are going to click the like button because you mm -hmm. think they're going to like just make it true and if they happen to click the like button great but if they yeah, don't absolutely. then that's fine too you know um because because it's it's for you like do it for yourself mm -hmm. not for you know the the fame or the glory 100 um, percent. you know and if if you spend your all your time chasing likes you know it's it's going to end up your page is going to be garbage because it's just going to be full yeah. of stuff that you don't really feel and you don't really believe and that that shows through more than you think i think with yeah. with videos and that's gonna be draining on you right because you're not actually enjoying it you're just in like chasing that high mm -hmm. of the like button yeah right? so do it for you i like that yeah yeah absolutely all right awesome well george i really appreciate you uh coming on today it was great chatting with you um, yeah, thank you for having me see on more of your videos and and be learning more about magic i'm uh looking to buy my first deck right now um, oh so all right I'll, i will keep you posted i'm sure i'll do a video about it once i get that so perfect yeah, let me know how it goes. If you need any advice, I'm kind of an expert. Yeah, I will definitely be hitting you up for uh, for what I need to buy and what deck tech I should be uh, watching, which video I should yeah. be watching. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, awesome. Thanks, George. Appreciate the time. All right, thank you so very much. Have a great day.